Hi guys, this is Jack. Welcome to my new series of digital art and design tutorials with Photoshop and Illustrator. I'm going to start out here with a few colors. You can see in the top left corner, I've got a kind of a dark bluish black, a orangish pumpkin color, and then a brighter yellow orange color. And I have all those on their own layer called colors so that I can turn those off. They're just there so that I can quickly use the eyedropper tool to select those when I want to switch colors. Um, and my colors will be consistent and I won't have to go to the color picker and try to pick the same color again every time I, I, I need to switch colors. So in this tutorial we're going to make a jack-o-lantern from scratch in Photoshop. So let's get started. Okay, our first step here is we're going to use the rectangle marquee tool to draw out a, a rectangle about this size and fill it with our, our pumpkin color. I'm going to name this layer pumpkin. Tried to move the layer there without having the layer selected, so I got that error message. So now we want to lock the transparency of this layer, which means we're going to be able to make adjustments only inside the opaque pixels of this layer. So now I'm going to switch my brush to a um, nice soft brush. I'm going to select our lighter yellow color, and now I'm just going to paint some vertical stripes. Um, the opacity of my brush, you'll notice, is at about 20%. I'm speeding up the footage here so um, to make this go a little bit faster because it's just it's pretty repetitive. Um, I'm just trying to get a little bit of variety into these stripes, some a little wider, some a little narrower, you know, some a little bit more opaque. You know, I go over some of them a few more times just to make them more pronounced. Um, these are going to be the ridges in our jack lantern. Now I'm going to come back with a darker color just to add a little bit of shadow in the um, valleys between the, the pumpkin ridges. Just to darken that up, give it a little bit more contrast. I notice I'm not doing all of them just, you know, because I want some variety. Some, some of the ridges are a little deeper than others, some a little brighter than others, some a little wider, some a little narrower. You get the idea. Now what we're going to do is transform this layer by hitting Command T on the Mac or Control T on the PC. And then if we click the little uh, mesh warp switch at the top, that will give us these little bezier handles that let us deform this layer in a really nifty way. So we're just going to pull these corner points in and manipulate our bezier handles to to give this shape a nice roundish pumpkin-y shape. This just takes a little bit of tweaking so I'm going to speed up the video here. There's no right or wrong way, it's just a matter of tweaking it till it looks the way you want it to look what looks right to you. You could have a little bit more elongated pumpkin or a squat fat pumpkin. It's all up to you. These middle um, grid lines, you'll see we can reach inside and we can pull those down. See how we're going to pull these around and kind of you know, follow the contour of our pumpkin to make the pumpkin feel more round. Then you hit enter to exit out of the transform tool and now we have a round pumpkin shape. You can hit close bracket to make is the keyboard shortcut to make our brush larger. Open bracket of course will make it smaller. Now I'm switching to the dodge and burn tool. So what the dodge and burn tool is going to do is it's going to let us to darken or brighten our layer. So I'm painting right on this layer with our shadow color in with the burn tool and you can see how that's darkening. Whoop! Here I wanted to switch to the dodge tool because we want to brighten our pumpkin to create the highlight. 
And you'll notice at the top, the range is set to mid-tones. So as I go over this, and I'm notice there's a low opacity so that we gradually you know, brighten this area. You'll notice how the ridges are staying kind of dark. That's because in mid-tone mode, you know, it's only brightening values that are, you know, brighter than a certain value. So the darker tones, it's is going to leave less, um, you know, somewhat untouched. Now I decided to add a new layer just to darken the shadow side of this a bit more. Now if I put my cursor between the two layers, hold down option and click, it's going to create what's called a clipping mask. The clipping mask tells that layer to only be seen inside the opaque pixels of the layer underneath it. So in other words, it's um, basically taking the transparency information from the layer beneath it. Now I'm, I've just grabbed the eraser tool and I'm coming back into that shadow layer and erasing out a little bit around the bottom of the pumpkin. This is um, reflected light that would be bouncing back up off the white floor that the pumpkin is sitting on. Um, I'm adding another layer and I'm going to paint in with a little bit of white just to brighten the highlight side of this a little bit more. And you notice I made that a clipping mask of the pumpkin also. So we're only seeing these shadows and highlights that I'm painting inside the contour of our pumpkin. Notice I selected all three layers and now I'm moving them down just to make some room at the top because now we're going to make our stem of the pumpkin. What I want to do is I want to pick some green colors, a, a brighter green and then a darker green. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm just going to fill that layer with a color for now. And then we're going to go to Filter, Render, Fibers. And what Fibers does is it gives us this really neat kind of streaky noise. I only need a tiny piece of this, so I'm going to select a rectangle section of it. Copy and paste it. And then delete our original layer there. We're going to turn this into the stem of our pumpkin. Again, hit Command-T for transform, click our mesh warp tool, and now we're going to bend this around into a, a pumpkin stimmy shape. Same procedure we used before. I couldn't really see what I was doing there, so I undid it and moved the layer above the pumpkin just so I could see what I was doing. Pull our little busy handles around to control the shape of our stem. That looks good to me, so we're going to hit return. We're going to move that layer behind our pumpkin and then scale it down so that it fits the size of our pumpkin a little better. We're going to scale it and rotate it and adjust it a bit. There we go. Now we need to paint up some highlights and shadows on our stem as well. So we're just going to use the dodge and burn tool just like we did on the pumpkin. First we'll burn a little shadow in. Make our brush smaller. There we go, adding a little, little shadow on the underside of the stem there. Switch to white. And whoop, again, I forgot, need to switch to the dodge tool. So let's undo that. Switch to the dodge tool, make a brush smaller, hitting open bracket, and paint that highlight in. There we go. Now we're ready to make the face of our jack-o'-lantern, so I'm making a new layer, naming it face. 
I'm going to grab the pen tool. And I'm going to pin tool out the shape of the jack-o'-lantern face that I want. So here's one eye. I'll just copy and flip this eye to make the other eye. So created my points. Now I'm just going to tweak the tweak the points a little bit to uh, get the shape that I want. Move that down into place, scale it up a little bit. Switch back to our pin tool. Now we're going to draw the mouth. When using the pin tool, I find it a little bit easier just to, to just to kind of drop down the points that I think I'm going to need, roughly where I need them. And I'm not really worrying too much about what the path looks like just want to drop my points down create my basic shape and then I'm going to come back and tweak and edit those points yeah a mistake I see a lot of people make is getting frustrated trying to get their path to look absolutely perfect you know the first time through as they're drawing the path and that that can be difficult if you're not real practiced with the pen tool so I would suggest kind of take it in two phases just Put your points down, rough out your shape. You can always come back and add points or delete points. Now with the direct selection tool, I'm just grabbing those points and tweaking them, moving them around, adjusting my bezier handles. You'll find this a lot less frustrating than trying to get it absolutely perfect the first time as you're drawing the path. If you have your convert anchor point tool selected, if you hold down the command key, your your cursor will switch to the direct selection tool. So you can easily um, switch back and forth between the two while you're adjusting your points just by holding down the command key. So you're not constantly going back over to the to the toolbar or constantly hitting keyboard shortcuts to switch your tool. You just keep your thumb on the command key. Now I'm just selecting groups of these points and, and moving them around, tweaking the overall scale and shape of this thing. Whoops. Now we're going to select this eye. Copied and pasted it drag it over. Now I'm just going to hit control T for transform and I'm going to flip it and then move it back over. Now that I got both eyes in here I see I think they're a little bit too big. It looks a little bit too cross-eyed so I'm going to scale those down a bit and I'm probably going to scale them differently so they're not exactly the same size. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now we're ready for the next step. Now what we want to do is we want to use this path that we created as a selection. So if you hold down the command key and click on the path, it will load that path as a selection. Now we can go back to our face layer, select a color. I'm just going to make this a little bit uh, brighter, slightly pinkier color of the, uh, the, the pumpkin color. So this is the color you want for like the inside of the, the pumpkin, you know, not the outer rind. So we just fill that selection with the color on our face layer. Then we copy the face layer, fill it with black, which is going to be the hole cut through to the pumpkin. Make it a clipping mask of our original face layer. And now we're just going to kind of scale it down a little bit. And this will give us the, you know, the thickness of our pumpkin and the, uh, you know, the empty space in the middle of the pumpkin.
Now where the teeth are, we need to tweak that shape a little bit. So I'm just going to make a slight selection here and delete a sliver of the black there. Same thing on this side. Now let's add a layer above the face layer, which is also a clipping mask, or a, which is also a clipping layer. And what we want to do is we're going to paint some shadows in here. We switched the, the blending mode of that layer to multiply. That's going to darken the layers beneath it. And so now I'm just painting some shadows in here into the, the corners of our eye shapes to give them a bit of a three-dimensional look. Notice again that the, the opacity of my brush is very low, like 20%. And I just use repeated strokes to gradually build up the, the shadows in the, in the cracks and crevices. Now where these sharp corners of the teeth are, I need a sharper edge. So I'm making a selection so that when I paint with my brush, my brush strokes will be confined to the area of the, the selection like so. Command D deselects. We could keep tweaking this thing but you guys get the point. Let's move on. So here's a, a quick way to add a little detail to this thing. We're going to add a layer style to our face layer. We want to do a bevel and emboss, but we're going to choose an outer bevel. So this is going to give us like kind of that edge on the outer rind. I want to switch my uh, blending mode for my highlight and shadow layers to, um, to overlay. And we want to kind of swing our light angle around so that it looks correct. adjust the opacity of our highlight and shadows till it looks good. And that looks good to me. So let's hit OK. It just adds a nice little little edge detail to the to where the face is cut out. Now let's create a shadow beneath our pumpkin. Whoops, we need the elliptical mark marquee tool just to drag out an elliptical shadow. We're going to fill that with our kind of bluish blackish shadow color there. Grab the eyedropper tool, sample that black color, and fill. Now let's give it a little blur to soften the edges of the shadow. And now if we give it a little bit of a directional blur with the, uh, with the motion blur and blur it just horizontally a little bit more, that will help add a little bit of realism to our shadow because our shadow is, you know, has a bit of an extreme perspective on it. Let's lower the opacity of our shadow. I'm going to move it down a bit, get it positioned correctly. And now I made another layer, and I'm going to just quickly hand paint what, what you'd call a contact shadow, where it's a little bit darker in the deep you know, crevice where the pumpkin touches the, the floor. There we go. We have our jack-o'-lantern. Now let's quickly modify it to create another version that's lit up from the inside. If we want to make this jack-o'-lantern look like it's lit from within, then um, the outside of the pumpkin needs to be a little bit darker. You can't have light without dark. We need that 
that contrast. So we're going to have to darken the pumpkin. We'll add a darker background behind it that looks like a, you know evening or night sky or suggestive of an evening or night sky. Then the uh, the face layer, this is going to get a lot of light from the, the candle or whatever the light source inside. So it needs to be a much brighter, glowy, more saturated orange color. And now instead of black for the, for the whole layer, we're going to make it a very bright yellow color. Now I want to add a bit of a glow effect on those, the eye and mouth hole, so it looks like the light kind of shining out, glowing out around the edges. So what I'm going to do is I want to create a selection based on that face shape. So if you command click on the Mac or control click on the PC, that layer, it will load that layer as a selection. Now what we need to do is uh, we only want the holes that punch through. So we need to combine this selection with the selection of um, the face copy layer. So if you hold shift, command, and option, and click that layer, it will take the intersection of the two selections. And that will give us just the eye hole area. Now we'll fill that selection on a new layer with the bright yellow, and then we'll apply some blur to it. it in screen mode and that gives us a nice glowy effect. We'll also add a, a, a gradient, a darker gradient in the background just to kind of break up that background, give us some more contrast and variety back there. You could take a lot of time, of course, and put a picket fence with a black cat sitting on it, or, you know, and, uh, you could do any number of things in the, the background which are beyond the scope of this tutorial. So just have fun with it. I hope you had fun and I hope you learned something. If you did, please hit the like button. And subscribe so you'll know when my next tutorial is available. See you soon. Bye-bye.